How's it going guys? Guess who? It's Chris Calder, yet again. And welcome to Part 9B, Tweaking Generators, Rapid Composer. Uh, this is um, Part 9 of my Rapid Composer tutorial series, and it goes right along with uh, our revised manual, which is coming out with the next update. Um, so, so let's get to tweaking. Alright, so I have a composition here, very simple. The tried and true Top 40 Pop Rock Progression, A minor, F, C, G. On track one, we have generic generators with a, actually I'm going to change this to piano, this regular piano. Uh, on track two, we have finger picking generators using the guitar sound font. Track three, general MIDI sound font, square lead, is melody generator. And track four is a thirds run generator, which is something new. Uh, in addition to the melody generator, of course. And track five is just a chord generator playing whole notes so we could hear the rhythm of the other stuff. So, right now, we'll just take a listen to everything together. You know, could sound cool. It's a little cacophonous, a little bit annoying, but no big deal. Let's go through and tweak some generators. Okay, so when you right-click the first generator in a ghost filled track um, obviously this window is going to pop up that's your phrase inspector and if you click these it'll say selected phrase as a ghost so we can't do anything with those but whatever we tweak in this one will reflect in all the other phrases and same is true no matter what track we do because they're all filled with ghosts the default generic generator is probabilistic rhythm so let's solo this track and listen to it. Yeah, generic can sound a little generic when you first throw it in, no big deal. Um, so let's tweak first the probabilistic rhythm. All I'm doing is playing with the sliders and previewing the phrase. And if I like it, I hit L and it tweaks, you know, all the phrases in that track to that exact rhythm. So if I don't like that rhythm, I'll play around, I'll preview this. That one's okay. How about this one? Eh, it's alright. Uh, we'll play with this, quarter beat. If you tweak the intervals to be shorter, you can get a lot more busy phrases, and that goes right along with density. So if it's less dense, you know, it's going to be simple. If it's more dense, it's going to be complicated, <laughs> right? And half beat is the default, so that usually yields a lot of pretty good results. So if I like that, I hit L, tweaks all, every phrase in the track. Okay, that's probabilistic rhythm, and this is over a generic generator. Then we can try Schillinger's Interference. And this is used to create like rests, random rests here and there, and just, I don't really know exactly how it works. I just mess with it until something comes along that's cool. The default is one beat, but I usually change it to half or quarter, because that usually uh, yields better results. And Schillinger's is cool because it gives you the options for the, uh, uh, the, MIDI velocities, basically weak, medium, and strong. So let's just go with strong on across the board. Yeah, it's kind of cold. Dun, 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 dun. Kind of sounds marchy or whatever. So just playing around. And playing around. Oh, I like that. So I'll hit L, and these become Schillinger's interference, you know, generic generators. A little bit weird, a little bit weird. We should up the chord notes so it doesn't throw in any weird scalar tones. Instead, yeah, that sounds more melodic. That's pretty much how you tweak Schillinger's interference. Okay, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll check those out. Weird, you know what I mean? So you can get a lot of cool uh, rhythms that way. Here's subdivision with a generic generator. Um, this is one of my favorite rhythm types because if you throw a generic generator in on a track and if you use a, a, like a 
a chiptune sound font or, you know, like a square wave, Sega Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, you know what I mean? Just get that perfect thing with this, depending on how it's set. And if you guys watch my tutorial part four, I basically quickly throw together like a cool little chiptune song um, using this generator type and this rhythm type. So we're going to just keep the grand piano on for now and increase the subdivisions, preview it. It's a little busy, but whatever. You know, the more subdivisions you have, the more, you know, the busier the phrase is going to sound. So many cool things with subdivision. I love that. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So then we'll apply and we'll listen to these. Beautiful. It's a very useful rhythm right there. So we're at subdivisions 9. Maybe we'll drop it down to 6. Okay, maybe we'll apply and listen to that. You get the idea. So it's real cool. And let's go to the next one, polyrhythm. Uh, you can definitely get some weird syncopated results from this. And I believe if you do the ratio 1 to 9, you can get uh, triplet style stuff. Or the stuff that sounds like it's in 6 8 time. I don't know. Uh, let's play with the metronome, see uh, what we get. Yeah, it sounds a little bit off time. So we have to play around more with these and see if we could just get you know, something useful. Yeah, polyrhythm can definitely sound uh, sloppy. You know, it's just the nature of polyrhythms, like depending on how everything's set, sometimes it's a little too sloppy or a little too uh, useless, I guess. But you just got to play around with the settings. Okay, that's straight uh, quarter notes. So we don't really, <laughs> we can't do much with that. So let's try this. Yeah, it has a little bit of a triplet feel like in there. But you see what I'm saying? You just gotta you gotta play around. And that's kind of rhythmic and simple. I'm trying to go for some triplets. I know they're available in here. I just forget what I said to get them before. And you know, so all kinds of cool stuff. That's polyrhythm. Yeah, see? That <laughs> sounds pretty sloppy. Triplet rhythm, basic quarter note triplets. Okay, so. All right. And if you put this tick mark, you can get shuffle rhythms, like a blues kind of pattern. All right. And very useful stuff. Love that one, too. Generic rhythm, generic generator. Let's see what we can get. That's kind of cool. Yeah, whatever. Increase the density, make it a little more busy. All right, not bad, not bad. Um, generate some new ones. And new ones again. Lots of cool stuff. So you can tweak all this, all these settings. Musical stress level. I don't know, man, just play. That one's definitely cool. All right, then we got probabilistic rhythm, which we heard before. That's the default uh, rhythm type when you throw in a generator. I think for everything except for bass generator, which defaults to um, bass rhythm. And then I think also chord generator defaults to simple intervals, I think. I'm not sure. So anyway, so that's that. And you know, bass rhythm, you could play around with the sliders. You know, set these, remove them, and hear how this sounds. Oh, that's cool. See? I like the little pause in there. So, nice stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's crazy. So I just kind of removed three of those check marks. I don't even remember what I clicked. I was just kind of clicking and letting go and screwing around. Um, tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. All of these are over generic generators, so you see the potential.
Here's simple intervals. I'll uh, make it shorter and see what we get. We can preview it. We could do, I think it's 16th, and this is, uh, you know, obviously eighth notes, I think. All right, so we can apply. Nice. That actually sounds kind of like the way somebody would play. So yeah, I mean, the potential is just ridiculous. So, you know, you just mess around, play with your sliders. Um, I don't know, full polyphony, less, whatever. So again, since they're simple intervals, these are rhythmic intervals. So obviously half beat is eighth notes, one beat is quarters. Okay. Um, two beats is half notes. Right? Quarter beat is sixteenths. Right? So that's that. And toggle intervals. You could, you know, add some rests, add some weird rhythmic types. You know, simple, but it might be really effective. Could be totally what you want in your song. Just something simple where there's nothing being played on count one, but on the other. Uh, counts or the beats. So that's generic generator. That's tweaking the generic generator. Now let's tweak finger picking, which isn't much to tweak because it's finger picking and there's not really much to it. And that's why it's cool. So that's default. That's fast. Uh, bottom four strings. Um, add pinch none. We could do slow. We could do Travis picking. Okay. We could do uh, change the strings to use. We could do this. It's crazy. I mean, like, oh my god, the, the potential. I mean, I really like the finger picking generator. And you don't always have to use a guitar sounding instrument or a guitar sound font. You could use piano. I mean, it all kind of works. Um, so I'll apply that to all my finger picking generators and we'll listen. Now that weird sound is just the, the way the sound font was made. So sometimes it kind of has more of like a muffled sound on higher notes and kind of a more stringy sound on lower notes. But that has nothing to do with this video, but I figured I'd mention it anyway. So, uh, you know, you change all this stuff. See, that's cool too. It's got like the two strings together on the first pluck. So finger picking generator, awesome stuff. Simple, but it just kicks ass. And you could have it not sustain notes if you want to. But that is always a better option. That's new, by the way. So that's cool. And then we have the melody generator, which I'm going to play. Um, whoops. I'm going to mute the other tracks, and I'm going to have this basic uh, chord, whole note chord generator underneath the melody so you could hear the rhythms of it. The melody generator is insane. What you can how you can tweak it, it's just ridiculous.